to differentiate y equals arc sine x, we first uh, write it as x equals sine y, and then differentiate with respect to y. So we get dx by dy equals cos y. And by the result about differentiating inverse functions, dy by dx is 1 over dx by dy, which is 1 over cos y. We've got the identity cos squared x minus sine squared x is 1, and we can rearrange that to give cos x equals the square root of 1 plus sine squared x. So we replace cos y with the square root of 1 plus sine squared y, and remember that sine y is x. So dy by dx is the 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus x squared. We can do something very similar for arc cos of x. Uh, if we write y equals arc cos x, then x equals cos y, and dx by dy equals sine y. So dy by dx is 1 over sine y. And another variant of the identity is that sine x is equal to the square root of cos squared x minus 1. So we replace sine y with the square root of cos squared y minus 1. Then we remember that cos y was x, so this is 1 divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. Very similar for y equals arc tanch of x. Uh, we write it as x equals tanch y. So dx by dy is sec squared of y, and dy by dx is 1 divided by sec squared of y. Equivalent identity that comes from cos squared minus sine squared x is 1 is 1 minus tan squared equals set squared x. So we replace set squared y with 1 minus tan squared y and get dy by dx equals 1 divided by 1 minus tan squared y. And remember that tan y was equal to x. So this is 1 divided by 1 minus x squared. This immediately gives us three uh, integrals. So we can say the integral of 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus x squared dx is arc sine of x plus c. That the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1 dx is arc cos of x plus c. But note that arc cos of x is only defined for x is greater than or equal to 1. And those, are the, those same values make this part of the integral here a real number. You can also extend this to values of x less than or equal to minus 1. And if you think about the relevant graphs carefully, you should be able to, to work it out. The third result we get, the integral of 1 over 1 minus x squared dx equals arctang x, is rarely used, because we can already write the integral 1 divided by 1 minus x squared dx as 1 over 1 minus x times 1 plus x, using the difference of two squares, and then express this as impartial fractions as half integral 1 over 1 minus x dx plus half the integral of 1 over 1 plus x dx. Those integrate to 1 half log mod 1 plus x minus 1 half log 1 minus x, and using the rules of logarithms, this is 1 half log mod 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And you might note there is similarity between that and the logarithmic form of arctang x. Think about these sorts of integrals a little bit more carefully. If you think this is the graph of y equals 1 over 1 minus x squared, and if we want to integrate 1 over 1 minus x squared dx between a and b, we've got to be in one of three regions. Uh, a and b can't cross one of the asymptotes, at, which are at plus 1 and, and minus 1. Uh, the integral only makes sense in the first instance, where a and b are both bigger than 1 or smaller than minus 1, and then the integral is 1 half log mod 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x plus c. Um, and the other case it makes sense is when a and b are between minus 1 and plus 1. And in that case, you can check that 1 half log mod 1 plus x over 1 minus x is just the same thing as a half log 1 plus x over 1 minus x without the modular signs. Uh, and in that region, it agrees with arc tanj of x. Um, and we remember that that's exactly the region on which arc tanj of x is defined.